So first up, we have um, Michael and Corsi from the Steve Tweety Local Municipality. Um, if you got the invitation, you would have seen a, a video on um, that features uh, Steve and his municipality um, in the context of uh, the just energy transition in their in their area. Um, so Michael is the assistant director for local econ economic development, and um, the name of that documentary is "Voices from Under a Dark Cloud Towards a Just Transition in the Coal Fields." Thanks, Leila, and it's still good morning to the rest of the attendees. My name is Michael Nkosi from Steve Chote Local Municipality, Mpumalanga, based in a little town of Middleburg. Uh, I'm in the local economic development unit of the municipality, as indicated. And maybe let's move to the next slide. Just to paint a socio-economic profile of the town, we, first, we are a fast-growing town. And averagely, we're growing at 4.4% annually and that is big for a very small municipality like ours although our unemployment rate is not that high it's calculated at 19 percent point rate it's still high for a small municipality like ours compared to the 35 percent unemployment rate at national level we are a youthful population and a majority of the population range from 18 to 35. And we have major industries, mining, manufacturing, tourism, and the creative sector, including agriculture and agro-processing. We are a mining town, as I'm saying, and our economic structure is skewed. Uh, and mainly dominated by the mining sector. Now, the risk that we're carrying from an economic point of view is that mining has a lifespan and mining will end one day and we're facing power stations closure in, in, in the vicinity. So it's not just a just transition to an ideal situation where we're utilizing uh, other sources of energy generation, but our power stations are closing. Therefore, we need to take a leapfrog, a, a, a huge jump to other to utilizing other sources of renewable energy. Now, the other component is that there is a proposed special economic zone, which then speaks to the problem that we have, the economic structure. Here, there's a potential of diversification of the local economy. There's a potential of recovering the economy after the displacement of the mining industry, given the imminent closure of some of the power stations. For instance, uh, at Gomati power station will be closed in a month or two. And Henrina power station has been decommissioned in the last two years. And Arnold power station will be closing in the next three years or so. So it, it is not just a transition, but it's a huge disruption, which therefore requires a an urgent plan to be put in place for us to deal with the the situation uh, move to the next slide please now the socio-economic context that this is happening that that is the just transition our power station are closing and are decommissioning and some will be repowered and repurposed, as well as we looking at renewable sources for energy generation, and not just the fossil fuels or the fossil sources for us to generate 
the energy. We are also looking at a situation where the mining sector will be displaced as well as the business or the mining business in the area. Because some of the mining companies were established to rely or supply ISCOM, hence the heavier reliance on ISCOM as the salt client. In fact, some of the mining companies are designed in such a way that they are conveying their coal to ESCOM and not even transporting them. So that's the context in which the transition happens at this local level. So the effects will be great. Looking at the contractors that are serving the mines, the villages that are relying on the mines, the informal sector that is relying on the mines, we therefore need an economic recovery plan that will ensure that the local economy still functions at the closure of these mining companies, at the repurposing of them and repowering, and with the mining sector set to scale down on operations, given the closure of these power stations, we therefore need a, a plan that will ensure the recovery of the economy and the special economic zone that is being planned and, pro and proposed for this area seeks to achieve just that. How do we recover the economy at the face of the just transition? Let's move to the next slide. Now, what are the implications of the just transition from a strategy point of view. Firstly, this process speaks directly to our energy mix strategy of the municipality. We, we have a policy approved by council whereby we need to balance the energy generation because that has revenue implications. Firstly, are we positioning ourselves as an IPP or are we set to buy from a third party and redistribute to our clientele? So those are the questions that we need to respond to in our long-term strategies. As well, the corporate lines in the area, particularly the manufacturers like Columbus, Ferrochrome, your task back be are getting their energy directly from ISCOM. Now, if we position ourselves as an IPP, do we then begin to compete with ISCOM for these clients? Hence, it speaks directly to our revenue generation. And again, the risk factors that we are facing. What programs do we have in place that will ensure skills development of the broader community and respond to these new sectors that will be created as a result of us moving from mining or from coal utilization to generate energy to utilizing renewable energy. Do we reskill our communities which come from the mining sector and they've amassed their skills from the mining sector or the education systems? Does it produce now skills set and ready to take advantage of the newly created sectors? So those are the issues that we need to deal with from a policy and strategy level, as well as the already mentioned SCZ that is proposed that will be able to stimulate industrial activities and industries in the local community. If that is being declared or if that proceeds, that is the establishment or the declaration of this town as a special economic zone, then we're looking at an industrialization that will involve the manufacturing of these panels and whatever that will be utilized in the renewable energy generation. Also, the strategy looks at the social impact. 
what is it that we seek to achieve in as far as those people that will be laid off in the mining sector? Won't it grow our indigent list? Won't it place a burden on the municipalities, on the municipality to look after those that are now, that might be out of jobs, that may be forced to go for early retirement and the ballooning unemployment. So those are the issues that we're dealing with at strategy level. Let's go to the next one. In fact, that was the last one. So the, 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 the issue is, does transition happen in a disrupted environment given the closure of power stations and our economy relies on the mining sector and what happens then if that is disrupted and what are the impacts socially and from an economic point of view on the whole process? Do we position ourselves as an IPP? How do we deal with skills level? How do we take advantage of the special economic zone as a recovery instrument of the economy given the dis disruptions that is anticipated with the just transition. So those are the issues that we need to deal with at municipal level, given our strategies and long-term plans, as well as the local economic development plan that we are putting in place. In fact, readjusting given this reality that we are facing. Three of our three power stations in our area Two of them are being closed and one being decommissioned. We left with one. Therefore, what are the plans going forward? So for now, maybe let me pause there. Thank you, Leila. Michael, thank you so much for coming today to present um, the case of your municipality that's deeply affected uh, by the closing of our fossil fuel plants. Um, in, in the area, um, a, a, a very strong case for um, bringing in those concepts that, that Steve mentioned um, around justice. Um...